Aloha and welcome back. This is part two in a series of basic mod X implementation. Uh, so last time where we left off was we basically established one template. We took the static HTML and CSS from a, a, a template and we dropped it into uh, into mod X and um, and then we just put a very basic little hello statement in. So we dropped um, the content tag in um, and then that was basically it. And so this time around we're going to be covering um, chunks, we're going to be talking about uh, settings, and we're going to be talking about um, chunk settings and uh, possibly uh, template variables which are called TVs and mod X. And so first let's do the settings. So um, in system settings um, I changed just a couple things. Uh, so we can see over in system settings, uh, this is Modux's system settings, and, and you, man, it has so much control over the system. Um, if you just click down to site, you can see we changed uh, the title of our site from Modux Revolution to Modux Lesson. Okay, and so now when we click the title, we see Modux Lesson is being pulled in. Um, the other thing we're going to do when it comes to settings is I've installed some packages, and uh, I've saved you the time of watching me install all of them. But the process of installing packages is really easy. You click on package uh, management and this brings you to your package manager. We, if you have a fresh install you'll see no packages. You can go to download extras and this will take you to the package store um, where you'll see all the open source packages. And so I've downloaded a few of my favorites that we can look at back here. So I've downloaded Ace which is um, an in-browser text editor similar to Sublime Text. I've downloaded Archivist which is part of a bundle that comes in this articles package. So articles is the the powerful blogging package that comes with ModX and it's packaged with uh, Archivist, uh, Git page, Quip, and Taglister which are all the components of making a good blog uh, here in ModX. I've also downloaded CKE Editor which is going to be my uh, rich text editor of choice and um, I've also downloaded uh, this Wayfinder which is a navigation package and the last thing I got was Git resources which is um, basically a dynamic way to pull pages in from one place to another and so the um, majority of these these packages have been developed by the people at ModX but there are a lot of other people uh, developing a lot of other packages so uh, do some reviews on it see how many people have downloaded that package and, and to make sure it's secure before you test it out so those are the packages I've downloaded uh, and I'll include them in a list in the comments below this video. Um, so you can see uh, now if because I have my ACE editor uh, installed if I go to look at uh, a template uh, now it looks uh, a little bit more usable. It's not that black text on on white background. Um, it actually looks like a text editor. ACE actually in ModX comes with um, Emmet um, text editing which is uh, a super way good way. It'll save you some Save you some time if you do that. Um, so now we have all the settings taken care of. The next thing we're going to move on to is chunks. I've created a chunk inside of our elements and uh, I'm going to look at it here actually. So our chunk is called header. And so what I've done is um, in comparison to our actual static code we can see the top. It had the doc type all the way down to the head. Um, and what I've gone ahead and done in mod X is I have removed all that and placed a chunk there instead. So you can see this is the chunk and it's named header all underscore. I have a little description of what that header is and then I just pasted all that header code. It still has our mod X tags in it, our dynamic site name, page title, site URL, all that good stuff. Um, and now I've just tucked it away into basically a PHP include. Um, and uh, Underneath the name, you can see it says uh, this is the name of the chunk. It's available using the name combined with double square brackets and a um, dollar sign. So you can see up here I have double square brackets, dollar sign, header. And it's pulling in all the header tags. Um, so if I deleted that, you would see the site go, all the CSS and everything go bye-bye. And it would just not be very good. Um, so that's going to be included on all templates that we make from now on. That's a simple way to implement a, a, a chunk. Um, on a site and yeah so now uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about some template variables so template variables are the things in mod X uh, which extend each template um, by adding variables to it so you can see 
Um, if I clicked over here and um, into my manager and I clicked on the actual home page um, to edit on the user side here in the in the dashboard, you can see there's not too many fields actually. There's a title, there's a, a long title, a description, and a summary. And each of each one of these can be pulled into Modex using the dynamic tag. So here you have square bracket asterisk long title. Here you have the same combination mixed with the name description all lowercase and here you have the same one intro text and then here we have our content which right now we're pulling in right here in hello and so um, you know how do we add more to it I mean do, is I know WordPress has like custom fields and and basically that's what ModX has in its TVs the only difference is ModX has included it in part of its core installation the custom fields um, known as TVs or template variables. Um, it's not a plugin you have to extend or, or, or download or install or have to update. It comes with the installation, which is really, really cool. And so what we want to do is we want to make some extra, we have all these little extra areas that are not necessarily content and we want to, we want to manipulate a few of them and, and make them here on the home page. So uh, this one is interesting because it is a one-page website. You could you could build this website in Modex uh, ten different ways, uh, but we're going to do just a couple of things tonight. So first thing we're going to do is um, we're we're going to go ahead and make a long title that says uh, a lesson in Modex implementation. You can see I've already done that, um, and if I click over to my home template, I've actually already inserted that long title Modex tag um, underneath the logo inside of a span tag and so you can see it's already pulling it saying a lesson in modex implementation and so that's something that I just know that that's that's exactly where I want to put it and that's where it pops up um, I could manipulate more and more of these I could put the description and put it right here and so I'm gonna I'm gonna take this text and so in case that's what you're wondering this is all about I'm gonna add something at the end like sucka um, and I'm gonna save that I'm gonna come into my template and I'm gonna look for that piece and there it is this one doesn't have the the little sucker on the end of it that I put but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete that I'm gonna put um, it was our our description so I'm gonna put an asterisk and the word description I'm gonna save that and you can see we should have the word sucker added on the end because boom now it's dynamically getting pulled from our description so that's not necessarily a template variable because we're gonna run out of that pretty soon if we did one more, let's say we we took um, you know this one down here, and we we added that into our summary. Well, we're, we're running out of fields real quick, and actually, in my opinion, that's not very semantic or or logical on the back end. How do I know that that's the description? How do I know? You know, th those are awesome things that Modex offers us, but but we have better ways to use those later on. We'll talk about that. Um, what we should do is create template variables. And so what we want to do is we want to go here, we're going to close up our tree, and you can see articles as I've installed it already kind of installed um, by default um, some template variables or one of them. I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to create a new template variable. Template variables are so powerful in ModX and we're just going to touch on them lightly and then we can read the documentation about them later and, and play with them a lot more and see how other people have implemented them. Um, if you're interested, you can watch one of my other videos uh, on how I actually built um, my um, my portfolio site in ModX and how a lot of them are using template variables so if I clicked into a project um, you can see all these are template variables right or like this is the content this is the title of the page but now we have a template variable for a, a logo and a button we have um, tags being pulled in we have um, uh, a way to organize and sort this this slider and this is a template variable down here and and so just uh, they can get really really dynamic but for us we're gonna do something simple we're gonna we're gonna go back and we're gonna create this line right here um, and make that our template variable and so what do we want to call that we want to call that um, let's just call that flavor text so this is the name of the template variable I'm gonna camel case it just so you can see it a good Kind of good practice um, and this is the exact same thing that you're going to put inside of the brackets on our home page uh, template so let's give it a little caption though the flavor text um, in the salmon colored area 
above the main content. Okay, so that describes it really, really well for us, okay? Um, and, and that way when we roll over it, we can see what it is. So we've gone ahead and, and named it and given it a caption, um, and we're gonna skip the properties and go to the input options. And so what we wanna do is, uh, we're gonna do rich text. This is super powerful in Mod X where you, you can describe uh, what kind of variable it is? What kind of input here in the back end is it going to be? Is it going to be a checkbox? Is it going to be, you know, a file upload? Is it going to be an image? Is it going to what is it going to be? For us, we're going to pick rich text, and on the output, we're going to leave it as default because that that'll be pretty easy. It'll default out to rich text for us. I'm going to click in template access. I'm going to give it access only to the home t home page template, and then I'm going to go ahead and press save. Here's what we're going to see. Um, I'm going to go ahead down here where I, I placed description and said I'm going to place the name of my template variable, which was flavor text. So I'm going to say flavor text, and I'm going to save that. Um, I'm going to save that uh, template now. Uh, and what we should see now is something we didn't see before. If I click on my home template, we should see a new tab appear called boom template variables. So it used to just be the three. Now it's a fourth tab. So as soon as you create a template variable and assign it to a template, any page or resource that's using that template is automatically going to have template variables pop up to it. We can see right now it's giving me a rich text field, and I can type whatever I want here. I can say, Aloha, this is my new text. Okay, And when I save that, because I've, I've also placed the, the template tag inside of there, Boom, I'm going to get, hello, this is my new text, okay? How simple was that? Um, now, a couple things about template variables. It, this is where categories kind of start coming in, so we're going to come into our elements and prep that because you can see it says uncategorized, and then what is that? That's kind of, that's kind of um, you know, confusing. Uh, as we start creating more and more template variables, they'll just all stack up inside of this one area. Now, if we want to be smart about it for our end user and make it really user friendly for them, we'll create some categories. So I'm, I'm going to create a new category right here and I'm going to call it salmon. I'll create another category and I'll call it blue. I'm going to create another category and I'm going to call it white. And so this is just one way you could break them up. I'm breaking them up by color. And so what I want to do is I want to take my flavor text. I'm going to click inside of it. And now what we can do is place it in a category. So I'm going to put it inside salmon because that's where it falls inside of our site, inside of the salmon area. And also something you can do is tell it where, where you want it to fall within the order of the template variables. So let's say I had, I had five template variables in here. They'd stack up chronologically as I created them, but if I want to make sense to the end user and say, hey, this is the first one you see, and this is the second thing you see, and this is the third thing you see, I could stack them up one, two, three, and so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make, I'm going to make that one two, okay, and I'm going to save it. And now we can see, if I come back in and, and refresh, click on template variables, this is in the salmon category. If I create another template variable, I'm going to go ahead and what I'm going to do is right click on my flavor text. I'm going to duplicate this template variable and I'm going to call this one um, uh, title uh, title tag. Okay, I'm going to save that. And now I've immediately I've created another template variable inside of my salmon category except this one's called title tag. So now what would happen if I came in and I want to make this thing my title tag. That was, that was the hope, that was the idea. So I'm going to come in and click on my home template, and let's just drop that, that inside, okay? So we have uh, down below the introduction, there it is. So I want to delete that, and I want to put a title tag, I think is what we called it, right? And so, boom, I'm gonna, it should disappear. We got nothing, perfect. We, we want nothing because we haven't, we haven't actually put anything in there. Um, so you can see that this one has this one is the flavor text and this one is uh, the title tag. It's actually still grabbing my description. Okay, so we we want to make sure that we're we're making sense with these things. So this is the title tag, and we want to say 
the title inside the little tag. And we want, because they were both competing for second sort order, they were, you know, it wasn't making sense. So now we've, we've gone ahead and cleared that whole thing up. So now when I refresh my page, you'll see I should have the title inside of the tag and I can have this. And now even this is a little bit confusing because, man, that's a big old text box. And are we really to believe I'm going to put a big old text box inside of there? So what if I went inside my title tag and changed it from rich text to just a text field? Just a simple text field. I'll, I won't allow it to be blank because we're going to want something in there. And I'm going to give it a max length of 200 characters. Okay. So now if I go ahead and head back and refresh this in the dashboard side and click on template variables, this just makes so much more sense. And now I'm not even allowed to save the page until I give that section a title. And I can say, my name is Jesse, right? As soon as I do that, I'm allowed to publish the page. It's, it, it, it's obviously the way it's supposed to be. It's a small title, right? Now let's see what happens if I try to go beyond 200 characters. It's gonna actually, it's gonna actually stop me and tell me the max length is 200 characters. So that's awesome. So it, it's important to understand that the reason that Modix is so powerful is because content management really should be content control, okay? We wanna set up restraints for our users in the back end so they don't crush the way that the website looks by trying to manipulate the content areas. We want to, we want to constrain the content. That's how you really manage the content, not by giving them free reign, not by giving them a WYSIWYG editor and tell them to, to just have all the fun they want, but by establishing how the site looks and not, not detouring from that. Okay. And so you can see we, we've just, we've added a couple powerful things in this lesson. We've done um, some chunks that'll just save us some time in repeating. So if I ever want to change anything in my header, I can change it globally that fast by manipulating my header. If I want to um, set up some organization, everything's inside my sample. I, I implemented some template variables. Everything's organized. It's succinct, and it's constraining the content inside. And it's it's just making so much more sense. It's logical. And we've also set up our system so that we're having dynamic titles pulled and. Um, if I create another page, you can see it'll change the name of the page for me. So all these things are fantastic. Um, and this is just the second step in, in implementing this template. And so I'll see you in part number three, where we will start doing some uh, pulling of resources and pulling of pages dynamically. Um, we'll turn this into uh, perhaps uh, a blog area down here, or like a portfolio area or something like that. And we'll turn this into... Um, yeah, we'll make uh, maybe like a dynamic area using a MIGX plugin um, next round and a little JSON information to, uh, to make this switchable and, and uh, yeah, that'll be super awesome. So uh, catch us later on part three. Aloha. <laughs>